I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to kindly invite the church to stand up in reverence to the reading of the Bible, the Word of God, which we're going to be reading of the New Testament, the Gospel of John. John, John chapter 5. Gospel of John, chapter number five. I'm going to read verse, just the end of verse six, the end of verse six and seven. Do you want to be made here well? The sick man answered him, Sir, have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. The church may be seated. May God bless the explanation of his word.
or to Jesus, or to God, or to Jesus, or to Pay attention. The beauty of God's word. The Bible is saying that there was a celebration amongst the Jews, and I have no doubt to affirm that there is a celebration here tonight. And the same as on that day, if you observe the word, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem speaks of the place of the blessing. This is the place of the blessing. Not because here there is the preacher, a man of a power, powerful prayer. No. But because here Jesus is in the celebration. That's the reason. Jerusalem speaks of a place of peace. And this is such a short message. Desire by the nations, by the peoples, that you will find only in Jesus. And he said, I will give you my peace, not like the world give it. The peace that the world give, it passes by. In the same way as everything else that the world gives, it's fleeting. But what God gives to man, it is for it goes to eternally and Jesus goes up to Jerusalem and as he wa goes up it was not by chance uh, just because he, he was as a habit but Jesus, whatever Jesus went the brethren know that whatever Jesus passed by whatever Jesus was the signs followed him I believe and you believe that Jesus is here in this celebration? If you believe His signs and wonders are going to be manifested here tonight. He goes up to Jerusalem. And there, there was, according to the Bible, near the gate of the sheep and the well called Bethesda. And this, in this well, there was there's a great multitude of people in need. When I look from here to you, to, towards you, what do I see? Needy people. And when you look from your perspective to, towards me, what do you see? A needy person. Because like the psalmist, we have great assurance and conviction of this. To say, Lord, I'm needy. I'm poor. And it's true. Lord, I am needy. But I came to a feast because I know that you take, take care of me and that while there were many who were sick the Bible says that there were blind lame and par paralytics and how many who are here tonight they have a need an operation from the Lord a sign from him in your life that he operates a blessing in your life in your heart in your home it's not going to be the man with a powerful prayer that is going to do this. It's not the preacher with the greatest uh, message. It's not A or B, but it is the Lord Jesus who went up to this feast. He, he came to this celebration near the well. There were those. And they were there for a reason. Firstly, they wanted a blessing. Do you want a blessing? And it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing, the blessing of the Lord. And the Bible speaks like this. The blessing of the Lord enriches and does not add it on to us any pain. If you want to leave this place rich, happy, filled with joy, different, desire the blessing of the Lord Jesus in your life. And they were there for this reason, because they knew that every once in a while the word says that a, an angel came from heaven and stirred the water of, of this well 
And as the water were being stirred, firstly, I want you to memorize this word, firstly. That whoever entered into the well after the stirring of the waters would be healed of any infirmity that that person might have. And I think if it would cause great <coughs> eagerness, people were thinking, oh, the angel is going to come down. The water are going to be stirred. Who is going to be the first to receive the blessing? And that was, those were the rules. They were all there waiting for the stirring, stirring of the water. But on that day, that day was going to be a different day because it will be there the one who was greater than the angels, the Lord that can do all things. Don't think that you or I were something important. We are nothing. But there is a being. It is wonderful. Glorious. That has is great in power and grace and glory and is goes beyond that anyone else and this one is in this feast Jesus is here in this place and the word says that there were there there was there a man that had been for was sick for 38 years my brethren I want to highlight this 38 years was not 38 days 38 days is a time 38 weeks it's a greater time 38 months it's a time but but 38 years it's like a lifetime and there he was every day waiting for the stirring of the waters to be thrown into the waters and grew in him this eagerness and this hope living with the situation, living with that illness and with the desire of receiving a blessing. And once again he saw the waters being stirred by the angels, but first it was a matter of opportunity. Someone else came down to the waters in, the, in his place. Then he was saying, I was Le left for the next opportunity, but tonight you are going. You are not going to be le left for the next opportunity. I'm going to say in the name of Jesus. Do you believe this? The blessing for you is now, is today. And for that man, it was the last chance that was going to be left for the pro next opportunity because Jesus went to Jerusalem to bless that man and many times we don't understand because it's God's economy God moves an entire church an entire people but many times he does this not to give a blessing to just one person to speak directly to one heart to you alive to deliver someone to remove from the heart of someone the feelings that do not please him that bring sadness to man and it's part of God's economy. And he goes to Jerusalem to do this. To uh, make this man uh, a day of his blessing. And today is the day of your blessing. And when Jesus saw that man laying down and knowing that this man was there for a long time, he made a series of ask, uh, questions. Do you want to be healed? Jesus asked him, Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made well? And now I'm asking you the same question. In the name of Jesus, do you want a blessing in your home? Do you want a blessing in your house? Do you want a blessing of an open door that you have been praying to the Lord? A blessing of health? A blessing of deliverance? A blessing of peace? Do you want it? And that man said, But Lord, you know what happens? There's no man that can help me. Because that depended on a man 
to push him. And your blessing here today does not depend on any man. If it depends of anybody, it depends on you to open up your heart, to say, Lord, I believe. Here am I, Lord, my Father. I know that today is today's day of a feast, and today is a day of blessing, and I'm here, my Father. Bless me. I want it. I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. I want to be cleaned. It only depends on you. Say that to Jesus. I want it. You need to desire it. Lord, there is no man, there is no man to, that can help me. And that man needed another man. That when the water is stirred, that to place me in the well. When I go, somebody goes ahead of me. So then Jesus said, It was like that until this moment. But I'm here. And I will tell you, bringing this message to a close, by the power of the word, Jesus told him, get up. That's the position that want, the Jesus wants to see man, not with the um, a person said, um, weighed by this, the weight of sin on your shoulders or, or the oppressions and the trials. Because the life out there, that's what life out there causes to men. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And by the power of Jesus' word, that man got up, took up his bed, and walked. And I'll bring this message to a close. The same Jesus that went to Jerusalem that day, he is here in this celebration. Do, uh, Jesus asking, do you want to be made well? What do you want from Jesus? There's no need for any man to do anything for you. But Jesus is the one who is going to do it. He is already operating.
to God. The service has come to its end. The Lord has given two signs for this service. A servant saw that there in the pulpit there was great, a great banquet and he saw that during the message food was given to each one of us according to our necessity. And we left this place completely satisfied. And he saw especially a woman that had an infirmity. And that woman was telling the angel that she came to the house of the Lord to receive a medication but the angel told her that this food was not going to only satisfy her hunger but it would also serve as a medication to heal her illness and also the Lord has shown that there is a family that is here that is about to make a decision of change and the Lord is warning you saying if you do it there is going to be a great harm to you. Remain in my love. Wait the direction of the, the, the Lord. For man comes the preparation of the heart. We prepare, we make projects, but the answer comes from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. Let us stand up. I invite an usher to pray here, glorify and bring the service to a close. Wonder Braden can pray. And the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus. The love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be resting upon us, my brethren, now and until the arrival of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service has come to an end. If you, men or women, desire, desire prayer, remain where you are. We're going towards you. We're going to pray for our life. Please raise one of your hands so we may identify you. The pastor here present, the deacons and ushers are here at your disposal to pray for our life. The praise you is going to sing a song softly.
מה זאת אומרת?